Okay, so let's just pray just to re- help me refocus. Lord, I just thank you. Father, we thank you for who you are and what you have done for us. And we honour you and we praise you. And Father, we just pray for your anointing on your word, that we'd hear with, we'd have ears to hear and eyes to see. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So today, um, what I wanted to look at is, I've sort of given part of this talk before on this aspect of our, our lives as Christians. We've been baptised into Christ, so because... Christ lives in us, we're temples of the Holy Spirit. We have this, we participate in his prophet, priest and king by virtue of the presence of God living in us. So I want to look at, I've looked at this bit before about priesthood and about worship, but I come across this other aspect of priesthood about blessing. And I want to look at today the power of blessing in the context of priesthood. But Again, it's not a full um, understanding of what the priesthood is, but this part has really blessed me. And um, as I've started to apply it, I've seen some, you know, some fruit. So I really felt to share it. A couple of weeks ago, I shared about this book, The Grace Outpouring. And um, this revelation comes from this guy. He came into this place where the Lord started to lead him in the power of blessing, and they've seen incredible miracles. If I get time, I'll read um, one of the testimonies, a powerful testimony, just from blessing and seeing what the Holy Spirit did. So so I want to look at this pivotal key. I believe it's a pivotal key, and I believe it can unlock God's power to us and his anointing in our lives. Now, in 2 Samuel 6, we we witness this remarkable event in David's life, um, and it's David's earnest desire to bring the Ark of the Covenant the Ark of God, symbolising God's presence, he wanted to bring it to the city of David. And <clears throat> the first time David tried to move the Ark, it didn't go well. Can anyone remember the story, what happened? So something, I'm going to read the scripture. I've read this part before, but I've never seen the part about blessing in there, which um, has, again, this is sort of what I want to try and bring across. So the first time David tried to move the Ark of the Covenant, if you didn't know, it didn't go well. And what happened, someone died as a result because the ark stumbled on a cart, which it shouldn't have been on a cart, because you'll see in the scripture why. And Azza stretched out his hand to to, um, to stable the ark, and he was struck down. So after David's initial setback, David learnt this important principle of what it was to be a carrier of the presence of God and the power of releasing blessing. So the story is in 2 Samuel 6.1, and I'm just going to go through different... Uh, verses because it's it's from six it's from verse one to verse seventeen but because of time I'll just shorten it and just pick out various verses together. So it says this: <clears throat> David again brought together all the able men of Israel, thirty thousand, and he and he and all his men went to Bala in Judah to bring up from there the ark of God which is called by name, the name of the Lord Almighty, who is enthroned between the cherubims on the ark. Verse 3, they set the ark of God on a new cart and brought it from the house of Abinadab, which is, was on the hill. So <clears throat> they set the ark on a cart. Now, this is the first mistake they made because the ark of the covenant had rings on the side of the ark and they was, the priests were put, were put acacia poles through the ark and they were to carry the ark. Now, why were priests called to carry the ark because they were consecrated to the Lord. They were set apart for that very thing. They were consecrated. So David putting it on an ark did the wrong thing, which he didn't know at that stage. So this is sort of a bit of a background to the story because it helps us understand how we are carriers of the presence of God because a lot of times we touch it and God wants us to carry it, his presence. So as a... Azza and Ohio, sons of Abinadab, were guiding the new cart with the ark of God on it, and Ohio was walking in front of it. David and all of Israel were celebrating with all their might before the Lord. It's a beautiful scene. They were celebrating with castanets, harps, lyres, timbrels, sistrums, and cymbals. 
When they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, Azza reached out and took hold of the ark of God because the oxen stumbled. The Lord's anger burned against Azza because of his irreverent act. Therefore God struck him down and he died beside the ark. Seems like an incredible story for us in modern times, but what God was trying to show is you can't manhandle God's presence. He's holy. He's separate. And priests were separated for this very thing to usher in the presence of God, to carry the ark. Verse 8. Then David was angry because the Lord's wrath had broken out against Azza, and to this day that place is called Perez Azza. David was afraid of the Lord that day, so he had a fear of the Lord. How can the ark of the Lord ever come to me? See, the ark of the Lord was the presence of God, and this is what we're longing for, aren't we? The presence of God. He was not willing to take the ark of the Lord to be with him in the city of David. Instead, he took it to the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. Now, it's an interesting story with the Gittites because the Gittites weren't a part originally of the children of Israel, but they made a covenant early on with the children of Israel. And here the ark goes to the house of Obed-Edom. Edom, sorry. Down to verse 14. Wearing a linen cloth, and this is a bit of um, a key to the scripture here. Wearing a linen cloth, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might. Verse 17, they bought the ark of the Lord and set it in a place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David sacrificed burnt offerings, fellowship offerings before the Lord. And after he had finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and the fellowship offerings, what did he do? He blessed the people in the name of the Lord Almighty. Now, this is a wonderful story of the presence of God and David's desire in reverent fear and approaching the presence of God. David learned something after other had died trying to prevent the ark um, from falling, which we see in verse 14. And this is what it was. Wearing a linen effort, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might. Now, an effort is a priest's garment. And it's a sign of David's consecration to the Lord. So he was separated to the Lord. And also we see it's a sign of his humility, David's humility, where he danced before the ark with all his might. So he was totally given to God, So, which comes out there in the scripture. After David's initial setback, David learned, some, David learned something crucial about carrying the presence of God, which we see not in 2 Samuel, but 1 Chronicles. 15.2. So this is what he learnt, obviously, after the first time when they would have, um, where he made the mistake and they would have read from the law. 1 Chronicles 15.2 says this, Then David said, No one can, may carry the ark of God but the Levites. For the Lord has chosen them to carry the ark of God and to minister before him forever. Key word, forever. So whenever we find a command in Scripture... Or a promise, there's a principle that we can learn. And in this case, on that verse that we see, it's the word forever. So then David said, no one can carry the ark of the Lord, but the Levites, for the Lord has chosen them to carry the ark of God and to minister to him forever. Guess what we share in? This priesthood, to carry the ark of the presence of God forever. So whenever we find this command that we can learn a, uh, a principle that we can learn. Now, the principle is something that our hearts can learn and this is a, a learning process and we're cultivating this, not something that we get automatically. It's always we're growing in this. And the principle is this, that only priests can carry the presence of God. God won't move on anything else but a consecrated heart to carry his presence. Otherwise, as others have found, it's dangerous. If we want to be carriers. So a priest is an intermediary or a go-between, an intercessor or a worshipper. So this is the, the, the role of the priesthood there. A worshipper between God and the people. So he's a go-between between God and the people. So they minister to God first. Then they minister from God blessing this is where we see the word blessing. David blessed the people as he brought the ark in. Then he blessed the people. So priests minister to God first and then they bless the people. Now, those of you who are Catholic here, at the end of Mass, what's the priest do? 
But it's how now, and 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 this is a this is a principle where the, p- part of this comes from. But so this verse highlights this special consecration of the tribe of Levi for the sacred duty related to worship and service of God. So a priest only a priest could carry the presence of God, and they were worshippers. They were set apart to minister to God first and then to the people. So here we see this incredible ministry. They were to carry the presence of the Lord, to minister to the Lord, and then speak blessing in his name upon the people. Seems simple, doesn't it? But it's, the first part, it's about the consecration and then what we release with our mouths, the power of blessing. This is what we see. Priests have this privilege of carrying the presence of God and speaking blessing. <clears throat> now this privilege that we see that they have, we have as New Testament believers. Somebody say, Amen. <laughs> it's, this, is quite, this is quite extraordinary what God's given us. But this is where it changes us from, it, it makes us understand a bit about consecration, about the presence of God, how he separates a people for himself to manifest his glory. But if he manifests his glory without consecration, we're in trouble. Because we can't hold it. And he doesn't want to do that because he's a father too. But he wants to manifest his glory in the earth and he wants a consecrated people, which was happening in the worship. Holiness of God comes and he marks us. Obviously, we're being marked. You can see the presence of God. You're here today. The young people, the children, families have been marked by God. But this is a way to move deeper into that. So it's something our hearts can cultivate growing in this priesthood, growing in this understanding of worship, growing in this understanding of um, ministering to God on behalf of people through intercession, these things. But we've been given this privilege as New Testament believers. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20 says, Do you not know that your body, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is where? Who is in you. Ooh. Incredible. Whom you have received from God. Now look at this. This is a consecration. You are not your own. You were bought at a price, the blood of Jesus, who's the great high priest. Therefore, honour God with your bodies. So this is what Paul's addressing, to honour God with your bodies. How is one way that we can honour God with our bodies? By what we speak. Our mouths, what comes out of our mouth. This is the power, and this is the, in the priesthood, the power of blessing. So we are now living temples of the Holy Spirit, incredible in itself. We are now carriers of the presence of God. The ark of God is now in us, the presence in the Holy Spirit. We're living temples of the Holy Spirit. All of our lives are meant then as God's people to reveal this mystery of the presence of God, the holiness of God, the power of God in its beauty and in its simplicity. The presence of God is a special gift reserved for God's people. And this is the the separation. It's reserved for God's people serving as a gateway that connect heaven and earth. That's what it's there for. So in, remember in Acts 2, the Holy Spirit felt people feared to come into the meeting because God was there. There was a glory of God manifested in his people. And this is a privilege that we've been brought into. So the church is able to carry the presence of God into all the earth. But one key that we learn from this that releases the presence of God is the power of what we speak. <laughs> Now, if you followed me around for 24 hours with a um, video, probably what come out of my mouth isn't good. But sometimes that is the very reason that I don't come into the blessing of God because I fail. I'm usually trying to overcome problems in my life by speaking instead of seeing the gifts that God has given me and blessing them and seeing what God releases as a result. So here's this wonderful truth. 
when Jesus came and he's revealed in the scriptures as our great high priest, so we understand something of the concept of priesthood, he's the mediator, he's the go-between, he's the intercessor between us and the Father, and he's also the one that releases blessing. This is Jesus, our high priest. Jesus, he is the presence. He is the presence of God. He's filled without measure as high priest. As high priest, Jesus is ministering to God on our behalf and he's releasing incredible blessings upon you and me and all of us if we receive it. Because Jesus is speaking over our lives blessing. Prosperity in its right form. Healing. <clears throat> Life. That's what he's speaking over us. And, and, and we are able to enter into this priesthood by virtue of him living in us and do the same and release what he wants to release on the earth. So 1 Peter 2.5 says this, you are, also a li- are you also as living stones are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. You and I are now called into this holy priesthood. We are to carry the presence of God to minister to God, to speak, pronounce, invoke and release blessing in the earth. That's how God has called us. Amen. <laughs> this is more, I know this is more of a teaching, but it's really powerful because of this guy, he discovered this. And he started to release blessing over this retreat centre where they were. And one story was, these ladies who came to the retreat centre, they were ministers' wives from a certain region in West Wales. And they came to the retreat centre just to network and get to know each other, to support each other, basically relationally. And they came down for breakfast and they got their boots and their shoes and ready because they were going to go for a, a walk, what we'd call a bush walk, but a walk in the woods or whatever, just for a time of fellowship and a, a time to get to know each other. So they put their shoes, got them all ready, their boots. And then one of the ladies, so he'd been releasing blessing over this retreat centre. One of the ladies asked another lady, would you say grace for us for breakfast? So she said grace. When she got to the word Jesus, the power of God hit them. So I don't think they were charismatic, hit them. They fell off their chairs. It was breakfast. They missed breakfast. They missed lunch. They miss dinner. <laughs> they miss supper. And around midnight, the glory, this weight lifted off them. And they were, they, they obviously were transformed by the presence. They were hungry. So they had dinner and then they went to bed. <laughs> and then the next morning, they woke up. They put their shoes out again. They wanted to do the walk again. And one of the ladies who was like the leader there was a little bit cheeky. She thought, I won't get this lady to pray again. <laughs> so she got the less spiritual person to pray. When they got to the name Jesus or Father, bang. Holy Spirit fell. They missed breakfast, lunch, dinner, supper at midnight the weight of the glory lifted off them. And then they all rang their husbands who were pastors. And they said, you've got to come here because God's visiting this place. And all their their husbands came and they said, we don't care what's on the air agenda, you've got to get here and come and see what's happening. And they, they got blessed by God's presence from an understanding of priesthood, consecration, separating my heart to God and blessing in the name of God, out of our mouths. Now, as I said, what comes out of my mouth has power, it has weight. If negative things come out of my mouth, there's obviously an opposite effect. 
I give it weight. If I say something out of a wrong spirit to my children, it hurts them. It, it damages them. And that's why we, we, we repent and we ask forgiveness for these things. But our words have weight, particularly as carriers of God's presence. We're now living temples of the Holy Spirit. We participate in the priesthood, priest, prophet, and king. It's interesting. I haven't done a study on this, but I was just meditating on it. Priesthood comes first, and then we speak the word, and then we move in authority of the king. It's not, I've, I've, I've never seen it written the other way, but anyway, I'll have a look at that another time. But we're carriers of his presence. We minister to God, then we speak, pronounce, invoke, blessing upon people. Now, 1 Peter 2 9, and this is from the ESV translation, it's an incredible verse. Again, um, encouraging us in this area. It says, but listen to this, but you are a chosen race. A royal priesthood, see? See, we are. A holy nation, a people for his own possession. That you may proclaim, that, see, out of our lips, you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. That you may proclaim, so you've been separated, you've been consecrated, uh, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him. What did he do? He called us out of darkness and he brought us into his marvellous light. It's all about consecration and the privilege of what we've been called to and how God's called us to walk in that. So imagine a church focused on Christ-centred worship a, Christ, a, a church focused on Christ-centred worship has the power then to transform the world, ushering in blessing and opening the heavens. This is what this guy did. He found this. This is a thing that God taught him. So it can change the atmosphere of my family. And this is what my wife's really good at this. <laughs> I'm not so good. I, I usually complain, 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 this happened and this happened and this happened. She goes, let's just start praying about that. <laughs> let's start blessing that, right? But imagine, imagine as a father if I started to do it over my family. I can see all the problems in my family, but imagine if I started to proclaim a blessing of my children's destiny in. And I come into agreement with Jesus, the great high priest, who is in in heaven, releasing blessing on my children and the right authority coming through me, I started to bless them in the name of Jesus. Imagine what could happen if I did it in my marriage maybe, which I know we do this. I'm just trying to draw the point of the importance of it. I know we do it and I know we fail at it. I fail. <laughs> I'm the worst. Okay, I'm the worst. And this is why probably the Lord <laughs> took me to this to teach me about blessing. So let's look at a more, um, let's look at this more, the power of blessing. And um, this is incredible scripture from Numbers 27, or 20, Numbers 6, 22 to 27, because it shows you how the Lord instructed Moses to tell Aaron the priest of what to do. So this is the verse, it says, the verses. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, so they were the priests, this is how you are to Bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you. And this is what we know, this scripture. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face. It's beautiful. It's all about his presence. It's all about the, the, the character of God for us. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The, the Lord turn his face towards you. And give you peace. So it's so intimate. Verse 27 says, So they put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Now this verse 27 gives us this remarkable explanation and insight into blessing. It says, So shall they put my name upon the people and I will bless them. So he said, you do it 
and I will put my name. What's his name? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. So from a blessing comes his presence and his favour and his face and his goodness and his peace. Crazy, isn't it? And we get to participate in that. God has placed into the mouths of the priests the power to speak words that cause God to unleash, if we look at it like this, transformational, life-changing blessing upon people. Because we participate in this. This is in line with our understanding that when people on earth, us, his, his church, are in agreement with the word from heaven. So when we're in agreement with the word of God, this is why the word of God is so important and the promises of God are so important. The power of the age to come is released in the here and now when we are in agreement and when we speak the word. Because when we're speaking the word, what's happening? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. His graciousness, his face, his peace is coming. In spite of our circumstances, Jesus have, has never promised that life would go easy. But what the Scriptures always promise, that will have his presence in every circumstance. That's what he promises. And this is how we come into this, the presence of God here. So words have power. Now let's look at what happened, and I'm going to finish here shortly, very shortly, Words have power. Let's look at what happens when Aaron blessed the people. So Moses told them, this is what you do. And now if we go to Leviticus 9, to 24, we see Aaron do it with Moses and we'll see what happened. The Lord, then Aaron lifted his hand towards the people and he blessed them. And having sacrificed the sin offerings, the burn offerings, the fellowship offerings, he stepped down. Verse 23, Moses and Aaron then went into the tent of meeting. So what did they do? They went into the tent of meeting. They ministered before the Lord on behalf of the people. When they came out, they what did they do? They blessed the people and look what happens. The glory of the Lord appeared to all the people. Verse 24, fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed the burnt offerings and the fat portions on the altar. And when all the people saw it, they shouted for joy and fell face down. From a blessing, the people, from a blessing from the priests, the people met with God himself. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Turn his face towards you and give you peace. Incredible. From a blessing. If you bless, I'll put my name on them. Amen? <laughs> oh, it's good. I'm having fun anyway. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really um, something, again, we learn to grow. And when you read sort of something simple like this, it puts it very practically. You see the manifestation of the presence of God. So... From a blessing, the people meet with God himself and the supernatural is released. The glory of the Lord is seen and praise arises. That's always you see from the manifestation of God's presence himself. You'll always see the praise of God. Jesus is glorified. When we release a blessing, we are also blessed ourselves because we're acting in the name of our priesthood, which is Jesus, the great high priest. When we release a blessing, we come into that blessing because we're participators in God's very nature and we receive what we give. See, this is where it's so important now. My my mouth, I'm talking to my mouth, comes out. So when we release a blessing, we're, we're blessed ourselves. Otherwise, if you're like me, we can get caught. We find ourselves constantly trying to fix problems. There's people like that, like that with me. You're constantly, day after day, trying to fix problems neglecting to appreciate and bless the gifts that God has already bestowed upon us. Because we're trying to look at problems all the time, we, f- we fail to see the blessings that God has given us and then we fail to release blessing there to see that increase through this gift. So what could happen in finishing? What could happen if we start to align our hearts 
and our words to heaven and speak blessing over our lives and the lives of those around us. What could happen? Well, I'm practising. I'm starting to practise. But just in finishing this, because I think it's an important point just to wrap this up. David found out this key. Remember he put the ark on a cart, Uzzah died, and then he realised that only priests could carry his presence. So David had to learn and adjust. It's interesting in that scripture too. He had 30,000 young men there and they were worshipping and praising God. All that praise and worship because they didn't do it in the right manner. It was for, no, for nothing until David learnt how to approach the Lord with the priest. So David found out it's key that only priests could carry the presence of the Lord. This is vital for us if we want to be carriers of his presence, if we want to see his glory. God won't rest on anything else but consecrated hearts, our hearts. This means worshipping like the priests and blessing become a lifestyle. So it's something that we grow in. We're learning to be worshippers. We're learning to speak blessing. The presence of God we see in these scriptures here will not rest on anything we make. He won't rest on the cart. He rests on us. He won't rest on the community. He won't rest on anything but us. Not a cart, not a new cart that David gave it, but people's hearts. People will often look at institutions that have created um, that have been created uh, to facilitate great ministries. This is even in the church. But no matter how great an organisation may be or the reputation, God doesn't rest on those things. He rests on us. And this is where the scripture becomes very personal. We're living temples of the Holy Spirit. How are we responding to God? So God rests on people. People with yielded hearts. We have this incredible privilege, if we look at what the Scriptures has told us, we have this incredible privilege of carrying God into all of life's situations through the power of blessing. We have the presence of God dwelling in us and it's released by what we say in situations. So in wrapping up in that concept, it's really important that we cultivate what God's given us that we become his temples, grow in this and release blessing and see the power of God release. Now, I'm, I'm going to finish it there. I'm going to hand it over to Joe. Is that right, Joe? Up to me. Did you want to do anything? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, true worship. Yeah. True. Yeah, about true worship and being consecrated to God. Joe, before, just asked me, he said he might want to do something at the end. That's why I said. But what I was encouraged from reading this book, and this is what I've been convicted of myself, is um, what comes out of my mouth. But not so much the negative, but the positive of what I can release. And again, the consecration first is to the Lord. It's to be a worshipper. You see Aaron and Moses, they, 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 they did the fellowship offerings, the burnt offerings, the sin offerings. Then they went into the tent of meeting. They met with the Lord. And the way we carry the presence of God, we come into his presence through worship. And then they bless the people. But the interesting thing is that too, it's this corporate dimension of worship that releases the anointing. And uh, it, it's an incredible privilege that we have. So we as Western Church concentrate on, I'm a temple of the Holy Spirit. But what if we're a collective living organism of his presence and we worship like David did as a true priest? He wore a linen ephod. Not that we have to wear a linen ephod, but he was a true priest consecrated, and he had humility in his dancing before the Lord. And it was all to do with the Lord 
and his glory was manifested. It was interesting because David found the house of Obed Eden, the Gittite, when they left the Ark of the Covenant there, who, again, the Gittites weren't a part of the covenant people originally. They came into a covenant because they made a covenant of Israel. But the house of Obed Eden was blessed in everything he had. And David seen that and he wanted the ark to come. So we, if we want the ark to come, we have to worship God how he prescribes. Consecration. Him, as Joe said, him in the first place of our hearts. And then what we speak is amazing what it releases. Again, if I don't release my words from heaven, I can release my words from the demonic too because the demons wait to hear what I say. Amen. I'll just finish it there.